KFC makes legendary fast fried chicken, but not all is finger licking good. Here are the 10 biggest KFC failures of all time. Edible nail polish. What the hell is that? Nail polish. In 2016, the poultry producing fast food chain decided to finally let fans in Hong Kong experience the ability to have KFC right at their fingertips. Literally. Available in two shades, hot and spicy red and original recipe green, the nail polish promised consumers the chance to nibble their nails and taste the Colonel's crispy fried chicken all day long. Made from all natural, edible ingredients, the nail polish was packaged in a way that would make it look right at home in Sephora. If you're wondering why, why it never made it to a global market? Well, there are several reasons. First of all, the polish had a very short shelf life. It was only good for five days once open. After it was opened, it had to be kept refrigerated, and the packaging stated it can only be used once after opening. The actual colors of the polish were reportedly not much to write home about either. Those that used the polish said that the red was incredibly see-through even after a few coats, and that the original recipe green clumped up and became lumpy after applying it. That's disappointing. Even die-hard fans of the chain turned their hands up at the product, opting instead to buy a bargain bucket of chicken, leaving the company to end its foray into the nail polish business not long after release. The Scoffee Cup. Cream in my coffee and rock and roll. To celebrate the collaboration between Seattle's Best Coffee and KFC, restaurants in the UK came up with a novel marketing gimmick. Partnering with experimental food creators The Robin Collective, the company created the Scoffee Cup, an edible cup that came in a variety of different flavors. The cup was inspired by the waxy cardboard cups that can be found at any coffee chain, with a crunchy biscuit shell coated on the inside with white chocolate. In a slightly more bizarre move, the cups were also infused with different smells, including freshly cut grass and wildflowers. Having a tasty sweet treat to go along with a hot cup of coffee sounds like a great idea, but of course, neither company had thought of the clear down side to the invention, chocolate and heat don't exactly go together. You had one job. Just the one. The hotter the beverage poured into the cup, the quicker it would melt or spring a leak. Needless to say, the product never even left the development stage. Double Down Dog. Why a hot dog? Mm, I just like them. The regular KFC Double Down hit the market in 2010, a sandwich consisting of cheese, bacon, and two fried chicken breasts instead of a bun. Delicious. The Double Down did quite well for the company, despite being staggeringly unhealthy. And in 2015, KFC restaurants in the Philippines took the concept to a whole new level. The Double Down Dog made its debut on January 26th. And yes, it is exactly what it sounds like. The company proclaimed the item to be a legend legendary dish for legendary people, which is quite the claim considering how long the Double Down Dog lasted. The menu item was only available for two days, the 26th and 27th of January, and even more strangely, only 50 would be available each day per restaurant. Of the lucky few who got their hands on a Double Down Dog, most were less than impressed and took to social media to showcase the newest delicacy. The pictures were less than appetizing, with dogs too big for the chicken bun and oodles of shiny congealing grease. The Double Down Dog soon sank into obscurity, never making it out of the Philippines. However, this menu item has a legacy that goes far beyond the island nation. Kentucky Roast Beef. Really? Turkey can never beat cow, Chris. Sorry. After Colonel Sanders sold KFC to an investment group in 1964, he continued to stay on as a spokesman for the company. In 1968, the new owners decided to diversify its menu by adding roast beef sandwiches to its selection. The only problem was that the chain's chicken-hungry customers weren't swayed to try out the beef-based snack. The sandwich itself was reportedly quite good. The beef was slow roasted with the restaurant's trademark 11 herbs and spices and served on a buttered bun. It's gonna be legend, wait for it, dairy. The new owners were so sure of the success of the sandwich that they also opened Kentucky Roast Beef and Ham Outposts, where you could stop by to pick up the dish. These outposts lasted until 1970, when they were closed down due to a lack of interest. Despite this, the sandwich continued to be sold in KFC restaurants until the late 1970s, before being unceremoniously discontinued due to its poor performance. Keeping up with the demands of making fresh roast beef every day was a major factor 
factor in the decision to discontinue the sandwich. The price also deterred potential customers. The sandwich cost 79 cents, whereas for just 6 cents more, you could get two pieces of chicken, mashed potatoes, gravy, and a biscuit. As we keep moving on, take a second to hit that like button, would ya? Thank you. Next! The Cheetos Sandwich. Did you steal my Cheetos again? In more recent history, KFC decided to team up with snack food extraordinaire Cheetos to create a new sandwich to challenge hungry consumers' taste buds. The Cheetos Sandwich was a radioactive orange morsel featuring a classic KFC fried chicken breast, a layer of Cheetos, pickles, and mayo. The whole thing was also slathered in a hot sauce creatively named Cheetos Sauce, which only added to the neon orange glow. Dude, Shut up! That is awesome sauce! KFC also decided to create a whole new mascot to promote the new menu addition. The mascot was a combination of Chester Cheetah and Colonel Sanders, which resulted in Chester wearing the Colonel's trademark white jacket and sporting a white goatee and wig. The chain even decked out one of its New York locations as a pop-up with Chester Cheetah-themed decor and special Cheetos menu items only available that day. While people were initially excited about the big brand collaboration, it was a different story once the sandwich was released. The Cheetos sandwich was very messy and difficult to eat, leaving a radioactive orange trail of stains behind. It was also described as quite unpleasant to eat due to the soft, stale Cheetos and the uneven ratio of ingredients. The sandwich lasted for around four weeks before it was dropped, and Chester had to hang up his goatee. It's not a pizza, it's the Cheetza. Now describe what you taste. Cheese. And cheese. In KFC's never ending search to find the perfect mashup of its menu and other popular food staples, the company decided to create the ultimate combination with the Chitza. Released across the Philippines, India, Japan, and Singapore, Chitza was almost immediately heralded as a visually unappealing mess. The new creation featured KFC chicken instead of a pizza crust that was then topped with tomato sauce, cheese, peppers, KFC cheese sauce, and a mysterious ingredient called chicken. Ham. The promotional pictures for the Chitza looked quite tasty, but the reality was anything but. Those that picked up the Frankenstein creation wasted no time in posting pictures online of what they received, which was decidedly different from the advertisements. The actual product was a sloppy mess with ingredients randomly strewn on top of an uneven fried chicken crust. Worse still, it didn't taste very good at all. One CNET review of the Chitza was titled, Eating KFC's New Chitza Pizza, A Journey into Regret. The review described the smell as a combination of old oil and faint spice and said it tasted too sweet, processed, and that each bite of the Chitza showed regret does indeed have a taste. It definitely sounds bad. Okay. Other patrons echoed this sentiment, with the Chitza eventually being consigned to the history books. KFC's Air Kentucky. Japan? What is, what is what's happening in Japan? What, 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 why is she going to Japan? While this may sound like the Colonel and company branched out and started their own airline, it was actually the restaurant chain's way of getting chicken into the sky. Air Kentucky was a meal available on Japan Airlines, and by all accounts, it was not the glorious bucket feast passengers would hope for on a long flight. The meal was instead a small drumstick and breast, a flatbread, a sad-looking cup of coleslaw, and and some often wilted lettuce leaves. Not exactly a feast fit for royalty. Not good enough. The meal was available on select flights, but it didn't exactly evoke the feeling of fine cuisine. The reason for the collaboration between the purveyor of fine fried chicken and Japan Airlines is because, surprisingly, KFC is extremely popular in Japan. Thanks to a savvy ad campaign in the 1970s, KFC has become a staple Christmas feast in the country, with meal Meals being reserved in advance and long lineups forming outside restaurants for their festive fried food. The partnership lasted for three months in 2012 before KFC's Air Kentucky was grounded. Surprisingly, this wasn't the first time KFC had sent its 11 herbs and spices into the sky. It turns out that this was the seventh time that the airline and restaurant chain had partnered up over the years. Cheese Top Burger I hate it this way. What's wrong with it? Let's Cheese!
once again, KFC went to the company's favorite testing ground, the Philippines, to launch its new experimental menu item in 2012. The cheese top burger was a regular KFC burger featuring a trademark crispy fried filet and garlic parmesan sauce on a soft bun. What makes this sandwich stand out? The sandwich also featured a slice of American cheese on top of the bun. When asked what spawned the idea for the new sandwich, KFC's Philippines marketing manager at the time said they like to play around with things that Filipinos love, and what people like to put in food is cheese. Upon release, the less-than-creative sandwich spawned plenty of mockery online. Memes of plenty appeared on social media, and the creation even grabbed the attention of the late-night host Jimmy Kimmel. Of course, apart from being a creative failure, it also didn't go over well with customers. The main complaints surrounding the sandwich were that it was incredibly messy. People found it hard to eat and got their hands covered in greasy, sticky, melted cheese. Enough is enough! While the same KFC marketing manager refuted this, saying that it's the biggest misconception about the burger, that it's sticky and greasy, you can eat it like a regular burger, and insisted that sales were excellent and it was here to stay. Well, the proof was in the eating. The KFC Nacho Box Do they do a decent nacho? In 2014, KFC took a hard turn into fusing Mexican-style food with their classic chicken, and thus the Nacho Box was born. This time, the company took their new creation to Australia for a trial run. Australia, mate! The box consisted of tortilla chips, popcorn chicken, salsa, and cheese. It has to be said that the combination sounds not dissimilar to the chitza, except with the added crunch of tortilla chips. The problems began soon after the item became available, when customer complaints began rolling in shortly after the nacho box made its debut. The problem? Many customers found that the cheese sprinkled on the nachos was moldy. The company was quick to withdraw the cheese, and in a post on Facebook explained that the issue had been caused by packaging issues. With the cheese problem solved, things did not improve for the nacho box. The complaints continued, this time regarding what was advertised and what was received. The box was advertised as brimming with chips and popcorn chicken and presented with a liberal sprinkling of cheese and salsa. What customers got were half-filled boxes, crushed tortilla chip crumbs, and sometimes only received one or two chips on top of a few scattered pieces of chicken. The Wada Box Did I order the what for the what 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 what? In India in 2016, KFC had a light bulb moment and came up with the Wata Box. Judging by the advertisement, the meal contained a chicken sandwich, tenders, a biscuit, and a soda. The box also came with a battery power bank and multiple charging cords, so it would be compatible with both Apple and Android devices. The Wata Box was only available in Mumbai and Delhi and could only be obtained by winning one, either in store or on Facebook. While the actual meal was a regular meal with nothing altered, the box was the star attraction. The power bank could also be removed for on-the-go charging. However, those that tested the power bank found that it lacked power and was extremely slow to charge. A trial was done by BGR and found that it took the power bank half an hour to charge a phone to 17%. What is taking so long? Once the power bank was recharged to 100%, they once again plugged in their device, but the charger only managed to charge the device by 7% before BGR being completely depleted. Ultimately, the limited edition box was a fun novelty, but not something that could go global or even fully charge your phone. Better luck next time.